Dustin Poirier has proven his excellent fighting prowess in the world since he started fighting with the UFC almost a decade ago. And with his skills and experience, he's now intimidating other professional fighters in the organization. Here are some of Poirier's achievements and why fighters are really scared of him. Just a reminder about our new giveaway. We're giving away the new iPad Pro or the new iMac Pro. The choice is yours. All you have to do is watch the full video, leave a like, comment the key word hidden in the video and make sure you're subscribed. It's that simple. First, where he started from. Dustin Glenn Poirier was born on January 19th, 1989. And according to his official UFC profile, he faced his first fight in 2007. And since he was interested in boxing, he landed up training in MMA in his hometown after getting drawn toward the sport in his youth. Clearly, he was good at the job. And as an amateur, he earned two belts at 155 pounds. He also won an eight-man tournament held in Iowa, received a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and a black belt in Rex Kwon Do. As you might have noticed, his journey as a fighter started off with a bang, which is one of the main reasons why UFC fighters still fear him today. When Poirier was asked about his college studies and degrees earned in a UFC interview, he replied, I got a doctorate from the School of Hard Knocks. Now we look into his early career. In 2009, Poirier started engaging in regional promotional fights, mainly in Louisiana and the Southern United States. He was an excellent fighter and accumulated a 7-0 record in no time. The WEC 52 event was held in November 11, 2010, soon after his debut saw Poirier beating Zach Mickelwright in the first round with TKO punches. After this, he defeated promotional newcomer Jason Young on June 11, 2011. During the UFC 131 event, Poirier was an unbeatable force after his first few wins. In fact, he continued with his winning spree and went on to beat Pablo Garza at the UFC on Fox 1, and then won against Jerome Max Kelly Holloway at the UFC 143 event held in Las Vegas. Not only this, he won by submission through mounted triangle armbar that earned him UFC bonus award Submission of the Night. But perhaps one of the most notable fights of his career so far is the one with Chan Sung Jung in the main event at UFC on Fuel TV. And even though he lost the fight to Jung, he still received a fight of the night honor along with Jung after the match. And at the Ultimate Fighter 16 finale on December 15th, 2012 in Las Vegas, Nevada, he defeated Jonathan Brookings in the first round by submission. Poirier went on to achieve much more after this fight with Brookings. He replaced Dennis Siver due to Siver's injury and faced Cub Swanson in the co-main event UFC on Fuel TV, Barreo vs. McDonald, which was held in London in 2013. His impressive performance impressed thousands of fans who flocked to see all of his matches live. Now, some more achievements. Poirier carried his winning streak into 2013 and defeated Eric Cook at UFC 164. This match took place on August 31st, 2013 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and was a particularly intense one. Poirier was severely injured during it, but decided to take up more challenges to advance his career. As you might have expected, it was a smart idea, and he ended up beating Diego Brandeo at UFC 168 held on December 28, 2013 in Las Vegas, Nevada. After Swanson defeated him in one of the matches, Poirier went ahead and demanded a rematch with Swanson. He even went on record to tell Canadian MMA journalist Ariel Helwani that Swanson must be a man since there was no other way he could have defeated Poirier. This caused a media frenzy, and people were shocked at the young fighter's confidence. Many applauded his courage and his will to fight again, despite facing defeat. Another one of Poirier's Poirier's prominent achievements is when he earned his second Fight of the Night bonus award fighting and winning against Akira Khorasani at the Ultimate Fighter Nations finale, held on April 16, 2014 in Quebec City, Canada. With two Fight of the Night bonus awards under his belt, Poirier became one of the most feared fighting champions in the league. But things weren't great for too long, and defeat soon followed in a match against Conor McGregor at UFC 178 on September 27, 2014. 
14 in Las Vegas. Losing to the loud and boisterous McGregor wasn't easy, and Poirier took the defeat to heart. He ended up returning to the lightweight division. Poirier felt that he was better suited to the lightweight division, and mentioned that his decision of not returning to featherweight or climbing up to welterweight was because he felt he could win more in the lightweight division. And he was right. Next, a long list of awards. Poirier has always been extremely aware of his strengths. He knows exactly what he's good at and likes to play smart during fights and diplomatic during press meetings. Perhaps this is the reason why he's managed to come so far in the competitive UFC world. And he also has a long list of awards to prove it. He has earned the Performance of the Night bonus award twice since his debut in the UFC. He was given the first one at UFC Fight Night 63 on April 4th, 2015 after beating Carlos Diego Ferreira and received the second one at UFC Fight Night 68 on June 6, 2015, after defeating Yancey Medeiros. After winning these awards, he won against Joseph Duffy on January 2nd, 2016 at UFC 195 and against Bobby Green on June 4th, 2016 at UFC 199. You might not believe this, but Poirier went on to win another Fight of the Night bonus award just a couple of years later. He earned his third Fight of the Night bonus award after challenging and winning a fight against Jim Miller on February 11th, 2017 at UFC 208. But the fight didn't go too well for Poirier, and he was severely injured during it. And due to these injuries, he also had to face indefinite suspension. But even after getting injured, Poirier was back in the game just a couple of months later. Fans were concerned for his physical well-being when he decided to fight against Eddie Alvarez in May, just two months after his intense fight with Miller took place. But he assured everyone he was capable of taking on another professional fight in such a short time. The fight took place at UFC 211, held on May 13th, 2017. Everything seemed to be going well, until referee Herb Dean had to call the bout between Poirier and Eddie Alvarez a no contest. This happened when Alvarez landed illegal knees to Poirier's head when the latter was a downed opponent. As a result, Poirier was caught off guard and this gave Alvarez an upper hand. But since the referee pointed out Alvarez's mistake, the match was called off after the no contest was declared. As you might have expected, Poirier was not too happy with the outcome of this match. He wanted to win against Alvarez and regain the confidence he lost during the time he was injured. But things didn't exactly go according to plan, and Poirier had to spend more time healing after the fight ended. Crazy records that were broken by him. As you might already know, Poirier has created a large and dedicated following thanks to his back-to-back -back wins against top champions including Eddie Alvarez, Max Max Holloway, and Anthony Pettis. He also managed to score historic wins against Dan Hooker and Justin Gaethje, which has placed him amongst some of the greatest fighters of all time. Poirier is known as the diamond in the UFC and holds a record of 26, 6, and 0 with one NC in his career. He is also one of the richest UFC fighters in the league. According to estimates, he was worth more than $2 million just a couple of years ago. His net worth has risen significantly more than that in 2022. The Sports Daily reported his total career earnings to be around $2,964,700 a couple years ago and with 11 performance bonuses to his name. He truly has everything a UFC fighter could wish for. Now, a list of endorsements. As a result of being the most famous mixed martial arts fighter in the league, Poirier has been approached by tons of brands for endorsements in the last couple of years. These include sports brand Reebok and clothing brand Robert Graham, among others. Both Reebok and Robert Graham are among the top brands that work with him currently, but he also has tie-ups with Celsius Energy Drink and other smaller brands that he routinely promotes as a means of earning more money and building a bigger name in the league. Are fighters really scared of him? Poirier might be one of the best fighters in the league right now, but is he really a fearsome fighter? Probably not. Unlike Conor McGregor and other controversial fighters, Poirier has had a relatively quiet and non-violent fighting career. He doesn't get into trouble with the press, and he remains confident and contained during all kinds of public interactions. He also doesn't make fun of his opponents, taunt them, or ever bully them on social media. So he probably isn't as scary as some people think, but Poirier is definitely a strong fighter, and other UFC fighters may fear him because of his strength and potential during fights in the octagon. So, what do you think? Think. Are fighters really afraid of Poirier's potential? Will he continue to shine through the new year as 
well. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.